Hi guys, my name is Meg and welcome to my channel. Today I want to tell you about the super fast and unassisted home birth of my son Demetrius. He is two weeks old now and I'm just now sitting down to tell you guys the birth story. I've written it out on my blog and I'll link that blog post down below if you'd rather read it. But I'm super excited to tell you this story because it is so crazy and amazing and it was just a wonderful birth and I'm so happy with how it went and so thankful that everyone's healthy and safe. So let's get right into this. Now just a disclaimer before we get into this, that this is a birth story, so there's gonna be some very TMI things in here, and if that is something that makes you uncomfortable, I am not offended if you don't wanna watch this video, but I just wanted to give you guys a warning before we get started. So if you guys have watched any of my pregnancy updates on YouTube, you know that I had a lot of prodromal labor and false labors and I was always having contractions and not ever sure if I was actually going into labor or not, which was kind of frustrating. But all that was doing something because my labor was so unbelievably fast that I had to have been really dilated by the time I actually went into labor. So looking back, I was actually quite thankful that I had all that prodromal labor because it wasn't actually that bad. It was a little bit annoying, but the contractions weren't painful at all. And so it was just kind of nice that it made it a lot faster. This was a night and day different birth from my first birth. With Sophia, it was 24 hours. I had like two hours of transition and three hours of pushing and it was really long and really hard. And this one was just like as opposite as you can get. So it was March 1st and I had been having some weird hip pain. It kind of felt like a period cramp in my lower back and hips, but I didn't really think anything of it because I had had these same sort of feelings for weeks. Like every now and then I would get the same ache in my hips and lower back and it would never turn into anything so I didn't think anything of it. So we just went to bed as usual and then I woke up around midnight with a contraction and it felt different. It felt deeper and stronger and like more of a tugging feeling. So I got up and I walked around and I went to the bathroom just trying to feel the contractions and see if I thought it was real because a lot of times I would have contractions that would feel different and I would think this is surely it and then they would go away. And so that had happened so many times that I was like, just because these feel different doesn't really mean anything. So I was trying to walk around and like feel if I could tell any change. So after I had been up for a little while, I went and laid back down and I had a contraction laying down and it was horrible. It was so painful. I do not like having contractions laying down. I feel so claustrophobic. I have to be standing at least for this labor. So then it had been about half an hour. It was 12.30 at this point and I decided I needed to wake up Luke because they were getting stronger. And I kind of started to think that this was the real thing. And even if it wasn't, I, I kind of needed his help at that point. Luke asked me is this if this was the real thing and I actually still wasn't sure at that point. I was like, I don't know, but I'm having a hard time talking through the contractions. So I kind of think I need you to get up. I texted my midwife and told her what was going on and she said to time the contractions which just seemed like so daunting like it was so hard to concentrate on anything other than the contraction while I was having one so I was like quickly trying to get my timing app set up in between contractions and then it was like it took me a while to actually start timing them because it just seemed like such a big deal to think about something else during contractions. I timed about five contractions. I was able to time three of them myself and the next two Luke had to actually press the button. I would like give him some signal that I was having one and then when it would end, he would stop the timer because I just could not, I could not think about it. And they were 60 seconds long and about 60 seconds apart at that point. So I let my midwife know and she said, I am getting out of my pajamas and I am on the way. <laughs> and she lives about an hour away from us. And at that point I kind of knew that she wouldn't make it in time, but I just felt so confident in my body and peaceful about just doing it ourselves. My brain hadn't really caught up at that point. I didn't, wasn't really thinking that, but my body just kind of knew what was going on, which is pretty cool. We had a list of things on the refrigerator that needed to be done once I went to labor. And once Luke realized that this was real, real labor. He was like trying to run around and do all these things like cover the windows in the living room so people wouldn't see me in labor and get out our birth box and change the seats on the bed, put a waterproof pad on the bed, all these different things. And I was having like 30 to 60 second breaks in between contractions and I needed him there during contractions. So he was like running around like a maniac trying to do all these things in that 30 to 60 seconds and then I would gasp help 
and he would run over and help me through the contraction, then run back and try to do things. And I finally just told him, look, it's, you're not gonna be able to do this stuff. Just don't worry about the list. I just need you to be here for me. My brain still hadn't realized how fast this was going, but again, as I said, my body knew what was going on because without even thinking about it, I just went over to our kitchen where there's still, it's just subfloor in there, so the floor does not matter if it gets messy. And I just walked over there, and it's kind of the entrance between our kitchen and living room, and there's a baby gate that Luke built there, and I was just leaning over the baby gate, holding on to it with my hands. And every time I would have a contraction, I would need Luke to put his arm under my chest and under my arm, and like kind of hold my upper body up so that I could relax my abdominal muscles, and it would just help so much with managing the pain. I felt so bad for him because I knew he was getting really tired and eventually he was like standing in that entrance holding on to one of the exposed stud beams on, in the wall and then holding underneath me with the other arm because he was getting so tired and I felt bad but I just couldn't, I couldn't handle the contractions very well any other way because I had to be standing on my feet but then I had to have my upper body relaxed and that's really hard to do unless someone's like holding you up. A few minutes later, I started dripping a little bit of blood on the floor and Luke texted the midwife to ask about it and she said that my cervix was probably opening so fast that it was bleeding. So I wasn't really worried about it at all. In my last labor, I was so vocal and loud, I screamed my head off. And I was really worried that I would do the same thing with this one. And I was, I was so hoping that I wouldn't because our daughter was sleeping upstairs and I probably would have woken her up with all that noise. But with this labor, I was quiet as a mouse. It was so weird. I was so present, just feeling every contraction, and I just needed to be quiet. Like, I kind of felt like if I had let myself start to yell or scream, I would have gotten out of control and not been able to handle the pain, and it just would have kind of spiraled from there and not been good. Last time, I didn't feel that kind of control at all, so it was really cool to just be a lot more present with this labor and feeling the contractions and knowing that I was more in control, at least of how I managed myself, not that I'm in control of the labor because that definitely wasn't the case. As I got closer to pushing, I started growling and thinking back on it, it's a little embarrassing because I don't, I don't really know why, but it was this, just this deep guttural primal growling and it was just, I didn't even think about it, I just, it just came out of me. It was just like what my body needed. During each contraction, it felt like a freight train was moving through my body. It was just happening so fast and he was just barreling down there. It was, they were the most intense contractions I've ever felt. They were so much more intense than with my daughter's labor. And I mean, it makes sense because each contraction has to do so much more work to get the baby out in two hours versus 24 hours. So, I mean, it makes sense, but they were so, so intense. Like, I just can't even explain it. And at the peak of each contraction, it would be almost unbearable. And I would just keep telling myself, this is the worst it's gonna get, and you haven't died yet, so you can do this. And I just kept telling myself over and over again that this, this is the worst it's gonna get, you can do this. And then after each contraction would end, I would tell myself, okay, that's one less contraction that you have to do before you meet your baby. And I would just keep telling myself these things over and over again, every contraction, and that was really helping just my mindset. And looking back, this was so ridiculous, but I remember being terrified that the midwife would get there and check me, and I would be one centimeter or something ridiculous, and I was so scared of this for some reason. I thought for sure it would happen, and I don't really know why. But yeah, looking back, it was crazy because at that point I was already 10 centimeters and he was like already coming down because it was just like the next attraction that I started feeling like I needed a poop <laughs> and I was ready to push. I started leaking amniotic fluid and we realized that my waters had broken. So every time I'd have a contraction, it seemed like a little more would leak out. It wasn't like this big pop and a gush like I thought it was gonna be. And that, I guess it could be because his head was already down there blocking so it would only come out during contraction when my uterus would contract. At this point, it was about 1.30, so it had been an hour since I had woken Luke up, and that was my transition. It was an hour long, and I started feeling like I needed to poop, and my body just started pushing by itself. It was that fetal ejection reflex, and I wasn't even doing anything until like the last couple pushes, because I was just like being taken for a ride. I had no idea what was going on. My body was just doing everything, and it was, it was pushing just all by itself, and I had no control over it. It was the strangest, most amazing feeling ever. It was just bearing down, and it's, it's a really interesting feeling to have your muscles doing something like that without your control. It's just, it's very interesting. And I reached down, and I decided to check myself, because I, the 
it's like if I'm pushing already he's got to be pretty close so I felt in there and he was only an inch away from the opening he was so close and I had Luke feel and he was like oh my word I can't believe this is happening that fast he was in shock as well and after that I felt a lot more confident in pushing with the contractions because before that I I didn't realize I was all the way dilated but feeling him right there I knew I was fully dilated and it was safe to push so I was actually pushing with the contractions, which actually it felt so good to be doing something productive like that. In between contractions, Luke kept mopping up all the amniotic fluid and blood that would spill on the floor with toilet paper, and he was rubbing clary sage essential oil on my lower back and on my wrists, which was really sweet. I had all these essential oils ready for before the labor, and we only got to apply it like two or three times and then the labor was over. I didn't get to use my essential oil diffuser. Like, there was all these things that I had planned, but I was so glad that Luke remembered to ask me if I wanted to have him put those essential oils on because, yeah, that was really nice. So I only pushed a couple of times once I realized that my body was pushing anyway, and once I started helping, it was only like two or three pushes, and I felt the ring of fire, and he was crowning. He was just right there. And my body just instinctively squatted down. Again, I didn't even think about it. I just squatted down and I put my hand over where his head was and as his head came out I kind of like instinctively lunged forward to try to get away and I kind of like smacked into the baby gate a little bit but it was like it burned so much that I just like tried to get away even though I, I mean it's not like I could get away from it. And Luke was like really confused he wasn't sure why I was squatting at that point and he wasn't sure why I had just lunged forward like that and then his head came out and it was just sitting there until the next attraction and Luke saw that he was there. He was like, what is going on? He couldn't believe it was happening that fast. And I was just holding his head in my hand and when it came out, it felt so small. And then it all of a sudden expanded. I had no idea that baby's head like kind of shrunk down a little bit when they were coming through the birth canal, but it was, it was a really strange feeling. So I just waited till the next contraction and then I pushed his body out and just kind of slithered out and I reached down and caught him and pulled him up to my chest and he was he was here and it was just the most empowering experience and it was just such an amazing feeling after catching your own baby. It's it's just amazing. I was so glad I got to experience catching my own baby and I want to do that with all of them. <laughs> and I turned him over and I checked his nose and his mouth to make sure he could breathe and he started crying right away and he just sounded so healthy. I stood up and I sent Luke to get some waterproof pads and towels to lay on the couch so I could go sit down, which thinking about my first birth again, I just, I can't believe I was so with it to tell Luke instructions of what to do next because I was so out of it. With my last birth, by the time she was born, I had been laboring for 24 hours and I was just gone. It was, I was just not there anymore. <laughs> so being able to be so present with it was really amazing. So Luke went to get that stuff and I was standing there and I was like wondering why his cord was so short and I looked down and his cord was kind of up over his shoulder and behind his neck and then down and it wasn't around the front of his neck thankfully but I just unwrapped his head from his cord and pulled him up to my chest so he could be close and then we went and sat down on the couch and I kind of rushed to get to the couch because our rug wasn't covered with anything and so I was trying to rush to not drip too much blood on the rug. And then it was only just less than a minute later that our midwife walked through the door and he was still crying in my chest and she said, oh, it sounds like there's a baby. And it was, it worked out so perfectly because I was so glad to be able to do it by myself. It was, it was just so amazing. But then I was really thankful that she was there right afterwards to check us over and make sure everything was safe and healthy. And it just worked out so much better than I could have ever imagined. So she made sure we were good, and then she just set about cleaning stuff up while we snuggled and waited for my placenta to come. Luke went and changed our sheets, and I got Dimitri latched on in nursing almost right away, and he's been so good at nursing. He latched on and nursed on both sides within the first hour, which was really awesome. I started shaking so bad from all the adrenaline that was going through my system, and just with how fast that birth was, I was just like almost uncontrollably shaking. I could still hold the baby. I didn't feel like that was unsafe, but especially my legs, they were just shaking so bad and I couldn't make it stop. It was so annoying. And I was just trying to sit there and breathe like really calmly and try to like focus on making my limbs do what I wanted them to do. And it was about 45 minutes later after he was born and my placenta still hadn't come out and I was starting to get some really bad after pains. Luke went and got me some herbal after tincture and that helped. 
but I just felt like my placenta was ready to come out, but I couldn't get any traction on it to push it out. Like there was nothing around it to push it. <laughs> so my midwife asked if I wanted her help with distractioning the cord to help it come. And I felt like it really needed to come out and I just wanted to start dealing with the after pains. So I agreed to have her help and she tractioned with the cord and I pushed and it came out into the bowl that we had ready. She wrapped it in one of those blue chux pads and laid it on my lap because at that point Dimitri was still connected to it. And I was so happy that we got to leave him connected for over an hour. And then after all that we were getting ready to move to the bed and I felt something really gooey on my hand and I lifted up the blanket that was over Demetrius and he had pooped meconium all over my stomach and hand and all over himself and then he had peed and it was a mess. So Sonata went and got a bunch of warm rags and we got us all cleaned back up and then after that point Luke cut the cord because there was no more blood pulsing through it, it had been over an hour and Sonata wrapped it up and put it in a Tupperware and put it in a refrigerator so that I could prepare it as pills later to take. The cord was stained brown a little bit so my midwife said that he had probably pooped meconium in the waters and looking back, I wonder if my body kind of knew that something was wrong and that's why my labor was so fast, that it kind of knew there, it knew there was meconium in the waters and that he needed to come out before he could breathe it in. But she listened to his lungs and he had breathed in it, it in all. He was super healthy, so I'm so thankful that my labor was fast, especially for that reason, because that can be really dangerous. So then we finally moved back over to the bed and my midwife checked me for any tears. I had some slight first degree tears in various places and I had one second degree tear on my perineum. And unfortunately it was torn in a way that if we had just left it, it would have left a flap that would have caught on things and not been very good. So I agreed to let her stitch me up, which ugh, I hate needles so much. It was horrible. I was really thankful when it was done with and I was glad that we had gotten it done because it will be better, but ugh, stitching up is so bad. Then she weighed him and took all of his measurements and put him in his onesie and wrapped him up in a swell and gave him back to me. He was seven pounds exactly, so pretty little, a lot littler than I thought he would be. At this point, it was about 5.30 in the morning and everything was cleaned up and we were all tucked into bed and everything was looking really good. Our house looked like nothing had happened at all, except that we had a baby with us. Our midwife does such a good, a good job cleaning everything up afterwards and getting all the stuff in the washer and just everything's cleaned up after, which is really nice. And then my midwife left and just left us to snuggle in bed and we actually got a couple hours of sleep in before Sophia and Dimitri woke up, which was really nice because I was getting quite tired at that point and Luke was too. And then we all got up around 7.30 and it was just amazing. And we were a family of four and we just, just sat on the couch and just introduced the kids and Sophia was so enthralled with him and she instantly started wanting to give him kisses, which was super cute that she knew to do that. We didn't even suggest it. And for a few hours, we were the only ones that knew that we had had a baby and it was just really special. And that's kind of what I want to do with every birth is just have a little sacred time afterwards that we just don't tell anyone that we had gone into labor or had, had had the baby because it's just between our little close family and we're just getting acquainted together and it was just really sweet. Sometime that afternoon Luke steamed my placenta and cut it all up into little tiny bits and froze it so that I could start taking it as pills as soon as possible and that has been amazing to take my placenta. I already finished it and I'm only two weeks postpartum. I didn't get any baby blues this time and I partly wonder if it was because of the placenta because it holds so many of those hormones that you just lost which is why you get baby blues is because of your hormones not being balanced. So it was really nice to have that placenta ready to go and that is all. That is Dimitri's birth story and I just am so thankful that it went so well and just so happy that I had the opportunity to have an unassisted birth and to catch my own baby and I just will never forget that experience. It was just, again, it couldn't have gone any better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this birth story and I will link the blog post with the story and I will also link the video talking about my first daughter's birth story if you guys are interested in hearing about that. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!